Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thanks for joining me today. I have a project share that I created for Country Craft Creations. I'm on their design team and this is using the Muse Collection by Chow Bella. So let's dive right in. So what I've created is a traveler's notebook cover and then the inserts I decorated because my base was the Graphic 45 craft travel album with notebook set. You get three notebooks in this. The uh, traveler's notebook, they call it an album, is four and three fourths by eight and three fourths and it has one and three fourths inch spine. So I loved the Muse collection. It was so beautiful. And let me undo this so you can see all the prettiness. But on the cover, I cut apart one of the sheets so that I could use the books and the typewriter. I just loved that look. I added a ink bottle here and a pen. These were fussy cut out of the cut aparts that were included in the collection, as well as this old timey camera and this little tea tin. I thought those were adorable. The floral picture frame here, I cut out of one of the journaling cards, added a little bow bunny, little gem there um, where it was hung up on the wall. I just love this scene. It kind of looks like, you know, it's your writing desk. It's where you go uh, to do all your journaling and get into story making. And, you know, it would be a little bit like this where it would have just all kinds of stuff there. So I really love that. On this spine, I continued the books and I added a little timepiece here. I thought that was adorable. And then on the back, I didn't do anything to it. This is the paper, but I just love the Voss here in front of the books. So pretty. On the inside cover, I added a journaling card from the collection. What was nice about the backside of the journaling cards is they not only had images on the front, but they had frames on the backside. So I really like that. So you can add plenty of other items into this pocket. I just put the one card and then we get into the notebooks. So for this notebook, I added a little uh, label here just so that you could label the notebook. And then up here, I used a butterfly paper clip to add in these two. Um, one is a sentiment. I am in the mood to dissolve in the sky. And then this little cut apart here, a little tag. I thought this was cute put some coffee dyed paper on the back side of that. On the inside, I added another cut apart piece. I love this. I layered it on some coffee dyed paper. Just love the whole stacked paper look there. Inside the pocket, we have another journaling card. I put some parchment paper on the back side of that one. And then on the first page of the lined journal, I did put a little strip from the cut aparts here and added one of their little um, coffee dyed or vintage papers, which I think is cute. And it just tucks right in there. It kind of lets you know that this is how you can do your pages. It doesn't have to be straight writing. You can take images and ephemera and whatever you have and just put them on your page. Once you get past all the papers, there is a back pocket to this one notebook, which is really nice. Nice deep pockets. The paper in the back here, I should mention, that came from the plaid pumpkin patch collection right here. I loved using this collection as part of accents in this journal, and I thought that went perfect with the page. Here's our next notebook. So we have a lovely little lady here doing her typing. I love that she's in boots. It's so adorable. I put another little label up here so you could again label the notebook. Before I move on, I wanted to mention that I've inked everything. And of course I used Ranger's Distress Ink Vintage Photo. So even the cover and the notebook's inserts are all inked. On the inside of here, I added another cut apart element. I just love this whole book inky kind of design. And in the pocket, I included a journaling card. 
And on the back of the pockets in this notebook here and back here, I used paper from the Ireland Forever collection. These two collections are exclusive at Country Craft Creations. Again, I just wanted an accent piece that wasn't from the collection itself. For the elastic ends, I added a claw hook to both ends, and on this one, it had a loop, so I included this leaf charm, which I thought went well with the leaves over here in the paper. So in this notebook, you have a nice grid, and here's the back side again. Next, I created a little waterfall file folder, and I used the die from the Graphic 45 folder and sentiment dies. I picked this up from Country Craft Creations as well. So I cut out the little folder. I added a sentiment from the collection. Breathe, darling. This is just a chapter. It's not your whole story. And I added that onto some more coffee dyed paper. Really like the layered look. Inside, I created a side tuck spot and included this little journaling card. And over here we have our three page waterfall. And what I've done is use uh, Snap Studio by Simple Stories. These are the photo flips, the three by fours. I layered them up and you can change out the journaling cards and put photos in there. And again, if you look at these a little bit closer, you'll notice, as I was mentioning, there's frames on the back side. So like this one, you have journaling on the front, and then on the back, you have a nice frame. Put your photo in there. And you could even put a photo down here. Here is our last insert. Loved this, so pretty. On the inside here, I added one of the little cut apart teacups. I thought that was adorable. Added that there, inserted a journaling card. Here again is a paper that I used as accent from the plaid pumpkin patch. And that was the dandelions. So pretty. So you'll see it there and at the back of the notebook as well. On the first page of this journal, which has a blank page for all of them, I glued down on the one side this cute little journaling card with the typewriter and then tucked in this journaling card. Great spot on the back for a photo. Again, just to get you going on how to use the pages. And on the back side, we have a wonderful spot here. You could probably make a table of contents if you wanted, do some more journaling there, even add a photo and journal. Great spot there. On the back of the cover, I added the teapot and another teacup. These are so adorable. And then in the pocket, I included another journaling card. On the back of the closure elastic, I added another claw hook and a heart charm that's on by Lobster Claw. So you could take this charm off or add another one, um, whatever you like. Really cute. So that is my project share for today. I really had a lot of fun creating this. It was super easy. This makes a great gift or you can use it personally for all kinds of things. List making, Bible journaling, collecting quotes, whatever you have a desire to do, this would meet that need. I really love this and I hope you'll give it a try. I do have a tutorial that follows this session right here. So I hope you'll stick around to see how I put it together. So today I'm going to be using products that I received from my December design team project from Country Craft Creations. And that's going to include the Graphic 45 Craft Travel Album and Notebook inserts. I may or may not be using the dies. I think I, if not, I will be then showing you a project that I have in mind for this. And then we'll be using the Muse Collection by Chow Bella. 
So I'm going to cut down all of my pieces to match the elements in this notebook. And then I will come back to provide those to you and we'll put it all together. Okay, so for our front cover, I'm using this piece with the books. I love that. And actually it was this way, but I'm switching it around. This is going to be on the back cover here. And this measures four and a half by eight and a half. The front cover measures four and a half by eight and a half as well. And then we have our spine piece. And this measures one and a half by eight and a half. And you'll see that goes over where the eyelets are. Now, when we go to glue these down, you'll notice that the Traveler's Notebook cover has round corners. So what I've found is that using a fourth of an inch corner rounder works out really well because when you lay this down, it kind of tucks itself right into the corner. When you do the half an inch, it actually goes in just a slightly a little bit too much. And so I just like that look better, but that's purely up to you. So you're gonna round the outside corners on the right hand side. Again, that's fourth of an inch. On the back cover, you're going to do the left hand side. And the ink that I've used for all of this project is uh, Vintage Photo, of course. Now, another thing that I'm going to do to help make this a little bit quicker of a video is I'm going to show you all the papers and um, some of the detail information, but I'm going to glue offline and then, um, and that will save time as well. Okay, so let's put this front cover aside a moment. We're going to talk now about the eyelets. And luckily enough, Michelle Allen, who is another designer with Country Craft Creations, actually used this project before I did. So she found out all the ins and outs. So how nice of her to figure that all out for us. So what I'm doing is some of the tips that she used in her video. For the eyelet on the back cover, the best way to figure out how to punch out that hole is to take your paper, put it down where you want it, And then you're going to rub your finger over it, or you could take your bone folder and rub that over it. What you want to get is an indent on the paper. You'll actually be able to see it. It's kind of raised there, or on the other side, you'll be able to feel it as well. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could take your pencil and go around the circle as well. You'll be able to feel it. And then that way you'll know exactly where it is. And if you remember, I bought this handy dandy little tool from We Are Memory Keepers. And you're going to need the 5 sixteenths punch. So we'll take our paper, slide that in where the 5 sixteenths hole is, kind of line that up, and punch that out, and let's see how that works. Pretty good. Once again, we're going to take our piece and line that up to where we want it, and go ahead and start rubbing to make your marks. Now this paper is pretty thick. So it's really not coming through like I would want it to so that I would know where my eyelids are. So I'm going to go back to the pencil version. Okay, I have my marks. I'm going to once again take the 5 sixteenths and we're going to cut those out and hope for the best. Ooh, those are hard to see. Just gonna try this one. Yeah, that's working. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to punch those out and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I have all my holes punched. Everything lines up, that looks great. And all we have to do then is to glue all of those down. Now, if you get to uh, putting your paper over the eyelet and you see the papers coming up on the side, just push down with your nail and go around the eyelet and it'll work fine. I don't actually have that problem, but I wanted to let you know in case you do. Okay, so those are the measurements for the front. For the inside front cover, you're going to need one piece that is four and three eighths by six and an eighth. Now we're keeping the length on this because we want it to slip into the pocket and to make sure it goes all the way down. Because at the bottom of the pocket, if this is our pocket, they have actually have a little piece that's folded under to make it more dimensional. So this is down there. So we want to take our decorative cardstock, put that over that piece so that you can slide things in and out without having to run into this piece right here. So this is why we're keeping the length and we shortened it a little bit to get it inside of the pocket. The back cover will be the same. For the pockets, these measure four and a fourth by three and a fourth. You're gonna need two of those. And the way to figure out the cutouts, the way I did it, set my decorative piece down onto my pocket where I want to put it. Then I took this little scoring tool and I went around where the inside of the pocket is, this piece right here. And I'm just following that around and it makes an indent into your paper. Now this is helpful because then it will show you, I hope you can see that indent. It will show you then to cut that part out. Now you want to cut this out just about an eighth of an inch more if you can, so that you continue to get that eighth of an inch border all the way around. So let's see, I have a one inch punch here. I'm not sure that's the right one because this is kind of wide right here. This is a one and a half inch punch. I think that might work a little bit better. So I'm going in, if I was to go here, that would be the hole. So I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch up from that. And there is the pocket. Perfect, as perfect can be. <laughs> so you're gonna to need to do that to the front and back inside pocket. Just take your scoring tool, go around the inside, make an indent on the paper so you know where to cut. Again, I have that. There, you probably see it easier on that side. And then I'm using the one and a half inch punch And there we go. Awesome. Now let's take a moment to talk about the hole in the back cover. Again, we're going to need to line up our paper into the pocket. Make sure it goes all the way down. And what you could do is actually flip this over now, some of these tips that I'm showing you are different than Michelle's, like the way that I cut out my pockets. This, that's different. The way I'm showing you how to do this is different. She was still very helpful in um, how to do the eyelets. So I really appreciate that. So if we feel around again, we can feel it here and just make a little mark there as well. And we're going to punch that out with the fourth of an inch punch on the inside. On the outside, 
It's 5 sixteenths on the inside. It's a fourth of an inch. I'd like to see how I did. <laughs> there. Excellent. For the spine piece, we're going to need one that measures one and a half by eight and a half. Same as the outside. Again, you're going to line that up where you want it and make your pencil marks. Okay, and again, you're going to use the fourth of an inch punch. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do those offline as well. And once again, don't forget to round your corners on the outside of your decorative paper. Again, using the fourth of an inch. Now I'm going to give you the measurements for the notebook inserts. For the front and back cover, you're going to need two decorative pieces that are four by eight. And make sure you round your corner on the right hand side, again, at a fourth of an inch. Now, if you notice on the notebooks, there is a angle cut to the corner of the notebook on the top and the bottom. And that's so that when you put it into the elastic, it's just a little bit easier and it doesn't um, wrinkle the top of your notebook. So I do have an angle punch, but I think it cuts too much off the side. I wanted you to see it with it not cut at an angle, so it's like that. If you cut it at an angle, and I use the angle punch for this, it cuts too much off, and I don't like that. So I'm gonna probably cover these up when I go to decorate the notebook. So I may just leave mine square, just not sure. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, when we go on the inside, we have this angle pocket, and I have my piece, and this measures at the widest part, three and a half by six and seven eighths. And then that will fit here, giving an eighth of an inch border as well. Now how I figured this out was kind of the same way that I used for the pockets. I took my three and a half by six and seven eighths piece. I aligned it accounting for the eighth of an inch border. I used my scoring tool again went to the end here where the pocket angles and I just followed that angle pushing down making an indent into my paper. Like that. So to get the eighth of an inch border I would put this in my cutter and go down about an eighth of an inch and then cut. I wouldn't cut on the fold, I would cut an eighth of an inch in. I don't know if you'll be able to see me do this. Now we need the piece for the back of the pocket and that measures four by eight. I wanted to use an accent color in the back of the pockets on all of the notebooks. So for the front and back, I'm using this piece and it actually came from Country Craft Creations Ireland Forever Collection. That's one of the great things that I've found about the collections that come from Country Craft Creations is that you can work with them together. You can use one collection with another collection and they match and that's a wonderful thing. So our four by eight piece will go here in the back. And again, remember there will be that little lip right here. I hope you can see that from when they made the pocket dimensional. So you want this piece to go over that, okay? And then you'll have one on this side as well. Right there, you can see it. And then this will go over it. I thought that went okay. You could, uh, I could take my 
dauber and go over it a little more so it's not so bright maybe um, but overall i do like how that matches with this Again, you're going to see that we have the angle cut to deal with. So you can, again, leave it square or cut it at an angle. I'll let you decide. <laughs> so on the back side, we have another pocket and we do the same thing. And we have our same piece. It is four by eight. And that will look like this. And our back cover is this piece. Okay, so that is one notebook. I thought I would just go through and show you the other pieces that I'm going to be using. So um, this is another one. This will be a cover. Here's my inside pocket. And in this one, I'm using an accent piece from the Plaid Pumpkin Patch Collection. This is a great collection to use as accent pieces because look at all of these plaids in here. I love that. There's dandelions in there. So another great one from Country Craft Creations. So that's from there. I thought this looked really well behind here. I think I'll just get a notebook so you can actually see the whole thing. I did do some inking around it, but again, I could do more to make it not so white. But I mean, that was kind of the point to have an accent. So it will look like that, which I thought looked cute, right? <laughs> and then on the back side, we'll have it again. Now, if you don't have these two extra collections that I'm sharing, you know, any accent piece, or you could use another piece from the collection as well. I just wanted to do something different there. I think that looks cute too. And then this will be on the back side. And then my third one, I'm using this on the front. Yeah, so that's gonna go on the front. On the inside, I have this piece. And this is an accent piece that I'm using as well. This was like that. And that comes from Plaid Pumpkin also, this piece right here. But again, I thought that went pretty good. I don't know, there's something about that I like. It doesn't have to be matchy-matchy. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's our piece in the back. That's really pretty. And then this will be the back. So you have seen all of the pieces that I'm going to be using for my notebook inserts, as well as the front and inside covers. So all you got to do is glue all that down and then your traveler's notebook set is complete and anything else that you add to it is just embellishment. So I have my decorative paper all glued onto my covers and now we can actually put back the strings. So this one's super easy. You just go to the other end and push that through. And now we're going to restring the center. So we're going to start by taking our string into the middle hole here. We're going to pull that through until we get a little bit of the string hanging here. And we're going to leave that there. We're going to go into the hole next to it. And down into the bottom one that corresponds with it. <laughs> Keeps getting stuck. Now we'll go over to the next hole and up to the top. So I'm just pushing this string out of the way, putting that one through. And we'll go over to the next hole and down to the bottom. And now we're gonna go right back into the center hole here. And again, I'm pushing this down and then putting in my string. So it looks like that. And the top one looks like that. Okay. And 
Then we'll pull our strings together and tie them. Now you can make these whatever length that you want, it depends on how tight you want them to be, but you definitely want to be able to get your notebooks in there. So let's do that. So when you uh, load your notebook onto the string, you could use the front cover, which is what they did, but I'm more used to when you find the center of the notebook and then put your string over that like this. Either way works. And as you can see, we have four strings. So there's actually an extra one that you could create another notebook for and put on there. Okay, I thought we'd make something to put on the fourth string. And it's just gonna be something simple. I'm going to use the file folder uh, die cut from the Graphic 45 folder and sentiment die. I'm also going to be using three of these Snap Studio Photo Flips, the three by four size. So here is my little file folder. Now, I tried to put it on my paper so that the print would be going in the right direction. And I didn't think that I should have cut it from the back side instead of the front way. I put it down this way. I should have put the die here and run it through because when you close it, um, it should be this way. And then my text is still upside down. Well, I find that annoying. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it in the um, traveler's notebook like this and then it will open up this way. It doesn't matter, it still works. I'm going to use a little sentiment I cut from the collection. Breathe, darling, this is just a chapter. It's not your whole story. I took some coffee dyed paper, tore the edges and inked that up, and I'm going to do some layering here on the front. Okay, and now on the inside, I cut this piece from the collection as well. I'm going to make this like a side tuck. So I'm just gonna add glue to one side. I'm gonna put that over here. Then I have this cute little cut apart. I'm gonna put that over there. Okay, now for the main part here. I wanted to do just a little bit of a waterfall. So that's where these little snap photo flips come in handy. I thought this would be a cute way to do it. So I've got three of them and I picked out three journaling cards as well from the collection to include. And I'm just going to, you know, stagger them. Oh, it looks like I can only do two. I thought I could do three. Hmm. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I did cut the sides of these down just a little bit uh, because they do show over on this side. So that's why I did that. So I'm going to take this all the way to the top of the file folder here, just making sure everything closes okay. I need to find my bone folder. And then this will flip open and we can put one of our journaling cards in. I thought this would be cute. Here is the opening. Oh, I did it the wrong way. <laughs> okay, well that makes it easier. <laughs> it's already down. <laughs> I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, that'll definitely be easier than trying to dig underneath and get in there. Okay, that's good. And let's try this one. Here, I'm just gonna go with this one. I'm just gonna butt these up right underneath each other there. These things are so handy. I'm gonna have to buy some more of them. I've had these for a couple years and never used them. Now I've used them 
twice in the last couple of months. So that's cute. I like that. Oh, did I do this one right? Yeah. Awesome. I wanted this in the middle, but I wonder if I can get another one here. When I practice, I could get three, but now that I see how I'm laying it down, and let's see, it goes this way. I think what I could do is cut some of the um, adhesive down, and then I would be able to get a third one in there. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I've just cut off maybe that much. Let's see how this works. Okay, so here is what it looks like when it's all done. These journaling cards are great because they have like a photo frame on the back side of them. There you could journal another frame. Yeah, really nice. I like that. Cute, cute, cute. Now, one more thing before we go, I thought I would tell you how I handled the ends of the strings or the elastics. And as you can see here, I thought this needed a leaf charm. So I added that here uh, to kind of go with this. But if you'll look at the ends, I did some crimping. And what I used were these claw hooks that I got from Tuesday Morning by Love and & Lemon. And what is nice about these, what's nice about these is on one end, you have a clasp, lobster claw, and then on the two, both ends, you have this little claw hook. And I just set the ribbon right into the opening there, right here. And then I closed each side down individually. Uh, it's a little tricky, but you know, it looks really good in the end. If you can see here, it just looks nice on the ends of the strings and it gets pretty flat. So there shouldn't be too much additional bulk. There was already gonna be bulk there because of the elastic. And then on the back one, what I did was I used the lobster claw and added a charm a heart charm that is from marigold uh, crepe paper so i just thought that would be you know universal it'll look good on either side of the charm which is something i thought about because you know the string does move when you take it when you undo the uh, closure so this way it'll look great no matter which way it is but that is another way to handle the ends of your elastic there Okay, so that's everything that you probably need to know to um, duplicate this in whatever paper style that you want. Uh, what's great about this is the inserts can be replaced. Just pull them out, put in another one. You can even make your own inserts as well. So this is very versatile and you can use it for all kinds of things. I hope you enjoyed this. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'll see you next time.